the lights on. Is it? Good evening, everybody. Um, this is the uh, Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission, Wednesday, February 19th. Mr. Roberts, would you help me with the roll call? Sure, Chairman Harley. I am here. Uh, Vice Chairman Roberts is here. Mr. Allard is not. Mr. Hughes is not. Mr. Reuchel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Hermicki is not. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Silver is not. Mr. Edwards is not. Uh, Ms. Antoniak. Yes, here. Ms. Murphy. Here. Hi. Hi. So we have seven of us, everybody's participating. Um, would you uh, help me with a motion to I make a motion thing? that we take item 3.1 out of order and go first? Second. All righty. So item 3.1 is a public hearing for application 2033-20-17 for Physio's Italian Kitchen seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.F.2. And this is for outdoor dining. So if you would join us at the microphone and and take a moment to introduce yourself and then describe for us what it is that you're seeking tonight. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Salvatore Campella, and uh, here we have uh, Chantal Golino, which is, she is uh, the uh, uh, person that runs the Spizio Italian Kitchen on 70 Woodcock Hill Road in, uh, in the town of Wednesday. And uh, she's been running this daily for uh, about a year and a half now. And uh, she's uh, seeking uh, a limited seating uh, outside the, uh, uh, the store, uh, right on the concrete uh, sidewalk patio that we have and, uh, uh, and for her uh, daily operation and, uh, and having people eat a sandwich outside. Basically, that's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, we have uh, from the building to the uh, curb line uh, that is approximately, uh, as you can see on the drawings that uh, has been uh, forward to you, uh, there is a space of about 11 inches plus, I mean 11 feet plus or minus, and uh, we are seeking to put tables in there not exceeding 60 inches, and there will be still about 4 foot 5, 4 foot 6 uh, accessibility for anything that has to go through uh, relating to the other two stores. <coughs> Spitzio sits in the middle of this establishment. On the left side, you have uh, uh, the uh, package store, and on the right side, I think it was a formal Wawa, I think. And uh, basically, it's like a coffee shop and uh, stuff like that. All right, thank you. Um, and just to clarify, because uh, if it's 11 feet and there's five feet to get around it, that would suggest a six foot table. I think you said a four foot table. 50 inches. Six, fi 60 inches. Six, 60, 60 inches. inches. That, yeah, 60 right. inches table, and you will you will have about four foot six, four foot five, for uh, a, a pass through on the sidewalks. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Um, go ahead, George. Yeah, just quickly. I, I went over today and I paced that off. Yeah, it's eleven, eleven feet. Within an inch or so, but you know. No, it's fine. It looks good out there, and it looks like enough room for for these chairs and tables. So, so uh, is there going to be any weight service out there? Is is this just? No, basically, what they do is they, uh, a sandwich will be served inside, and if they're willing to move outside and consume the uh, food outside, that will be uh, that will be uh, the the idea. Basically, that's what it is. We we have no. You know, she doesn't have any waitressing serving at the table. But uh, she can order it, or you can order at the, at the uh, daily, and uh, uh, you can sit. She will bring it out to you. But there's not, there's not really a waitressing, or not, not that much of that. No, okay. it's just to enjoy the outside, uh, the outdoors. Okay. And there's no alcohol being served. I'm sorry. There's no alcohol being served no. there, right? No. Rich. Well, that was one of my questions. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to take the chairs and tables in at night? Uh, good question. I appreciate that. And uh, the chairs will be going inside. Yes, the tables we are thinking to fasten them somehow to the structure of the building. Yes. Okay. And I guess the last question is as much for Peter as anybody. Um, is there any issue with parking, given that you have like additional seats and 
sometimes when people have had limited seats, we've made them take them out of the inside, but is this an issue here? When we consider them outdoor seating, we consider them seasonal. We don't add in an additional parking factor. Um, so historically, we have not triggered additional parking because it's really, um, that's really tied to the occupancy of the building rather than the additional stuff outside. So. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, prior to you, on occasion, we had done that kind of calculation. Yeah, I think if people you had to take away indoor seats to, to offset the outdoor seats. Yeah, I think this is being added as a complement rather than handling overflow. I mean, if it was such a busy establishment as they had waiting lines and these additional seats were going to, you know, accommodate that, I think maybe in those cases you might have to think about that. But in this case, it's more of a uh, an add-on or a complement to what they have um, existing. Uh, so. Uh, Given what I know about the the restaurant, I wouldn't it wouldn't be in that scenario. Yeah, I mean, and if it's like D and D, it's probably people that would otherwise be sitting in their cars anyway. Right, right. George, just an additional comment or two. Yeah, I mean, walked around the the area, and uh, the sidewalk is in great shape. There's some new slabs in there. Uh, the pavement is in good shape. The parking lot, everything is is all uh, is up to. I wish all of our facilities in town were that good and uh, so uh, no I, I, uh, I thought the conditions were good there so. we did uh, ask the health district to weigh in so you have a I think you have an email uh, in the packet from the health district so they are, they're okay with uh, this as well so Tom how crucial is this uh, is, is this additional service going to be to the business operations of the of the restaurant well, under the good weather, I think it's going to be very crucial because not too far from them, you have two, two establishments that belong to the uh, state of Connecticut. One is the Correctional Center down on Walker Field Road, and then you have the Labor Department on, on, uh, on Jordan Lane. So there are people coming out you know, for lunch, and there's people coming, I mean, walking around the neighborhood too. So that's, uh, you know, that would be really a good impact to us, yes. Do you have any idea in terms of you know, what the amount of business increase this would, would result? Well, we're hoping anything that will help out the business, anything will go that uh, that will help out. So you uh, no studies or research? Uh, no, we, uh, we haven't. No, no, we have not. The only thing is that uh, I think it will be a good uh, enhancement for the corner of Woodcuts and uh, Jordan Lane because uh, in the past it was a little bit. Uh, you know, what I mean, I don't know if you have noticed in uh, uh, in the past year or so, the landlord uh, has cleaned up the place quite a bit. Somebody, uh, uh, prior tenants on this place over here painted a whole brick. Uh, I think it was a gray and, and white and gray and black, whatever it is. And, uh, uh, yeah, and it was all cleaned up or your know, lights were replaced. And uh, parking lot has been uh, either resealed it or uh, and, uh, and striping was made. I just want to add that, uh, you know, to answer the parking situation, you know, there is 40 parking spaces on the premises as it is right now. The so it shows on the side joints. Now the parking that comes in, uh, that's right in front of the restaurant, that's nose-in parking. Correct. Correct. Uh, the curb for that, the the uh, uh, the curb bump. Yes. Uh, is is asphalt. Yes. Uh, it, my view of it is that it's about uh, four to five inches high. Correct. So there's not much. Uh, there would be fairly easy for a an automobile to run over that and actually run into the to the sidewalk because the sidewalk is not not raised from the street level. Correct. Um, now there is a there is a portion of the uh, sidewalk as you look through the whole building mm -hmm. where the, uh, uh, the 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 wall surface of the building on the out on the exterior uh, curves in probably about an additional two feet. Uh, but that's not in front of your restaurant. That is correct. That's a, the, the store next to it, yes. Uh, so you're putting this in essentially the most narrow part of the, of the, of the sidewalk. Correct, not in front of the store. Yeah, right. The space doesn't belong to fit here, right. Is there any, um, are there any plans or intent to increase the... Uh, uh, the the, the um, safety of the car running over is that what you're saying? That's that's right. Is there uh, any is that what is you're driving at? Yeah, I, I can, read, I can read what you're saying. Yes, uh, there is a way that we were thinking at it 
uh, to install the uh, in front of the store. I think it's about six parking spaces, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a uh, temporary uh, uh, curb, stops. concrete curbs. Curb size. Curb size. Curb size. Yeah. You know, to put that in there, and uh, and of course remove them. I mean, you have to pin them, okay, and uh, and remove them in the wintertime because uh, the whole place gets plowed in the wintertime. It's easy for, you know, especially elderly people to come over and get into the stores, either ours or anybody else's stores there. But yes, it's a good point. We are thinking of that, or we are thinking of, uh, uh, I, I would like flower pots, I'll be honest with you. Well, you can get where I'm coming from, which is the yes, I arena of that. safety. Yep. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about that. We thought about it. It would be so easy for yep. a motor vehicle to yep. come plowing into Yep. Uh, probably not the, the tables, but to pedestrians that are walking on the, you know, the outskirts of, of the tables and the yep. sidewalk that's, that's, uh, it's, that's yeah, remaining. Yeah, it's a good point. That's, we that's we thought about it and to, to get those concrete curbs. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be five parking spaces in front of the store where the table is going to be. So well, that I will think my, the, my, my vote, if I would be in favor of this, would be contingent upon that installation. Yeah. We're going to do it anyway, regardless. We thought about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you, you can walk. <coughs> yes, I've, I've walked past it. I've probably walked past this area about a, oh, in the 30 plus years I've lived in Weathersfield, many, probably how, about a thousand times. How many times. years have you lived in your house on, so, was it? Yeah, I've lived in that, that particular house some 30, mm, 33 years. Have you seen any accidents there or people going over that curve? I have seen. Well, I have seen cars, particularly cars that, 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 well, particularly American-made cars that have uh, the, the long nose before, you know, the, the wheels hit the uh, stop. So there's, there's occasional uh, car that's, that's moved up uh, that, that overhangs onto the sidewalk by about, you know, uh, two, two and a half feet. And um, also I've, I've seen, you know, some... Uh, I haven't seen any actual accidents, but I've seen some near accidents uh, with cars coming in, you know, really, really quick into those nose-in spaces, and um, someone could easily lose control, or uh, or the brakes could fail, or. But you haven't seen any. I haven't seen like any that. of that, but but it is a it is a risk. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Um. Let me, let me move on to a different topic for just a moment because I think we're going to come back to that safety issue. Um, waste, uh, rubbish, do you have a plan for a can out there? Is there already some can out there? Well, the cans are, what, well, there are the uh, four yards uh, pick up, uh, you know, at the end of the parking lot inside there, but we can provide, you know, we can provide the cans on the outside and then put them in on the inside. At night time, get them in. Yeah, exactly. Just yes, some, no, just I, some waste disposal oh yeah, thing. Yes. Yeah. It will be, yeah. Yeah, that, Otherwise, otherwise you'll be chasing. Occupy more of the sidewalk space. Excuse me. Would those cans be? Uh, no, they're going to be. The no, they're going to be. No, they're going to be against the building. No. All right. Next one over. So, so let's go back to the safety issue, right? I, th I think the potted plant is going to take up too much space. The car won't overhang it, and it might be sticking out into the roadway. So while I certainly understand your preference for that, you may find that the wheel stops are the way you need to go. The car will not, I'll be honest with you, no. you have about uh, 24 feet between the curb and the end of the road, actually where the property line is and where the parking is. So by uh, installing these uh, concrete curbs, it will not it will not have the car overhang into the uh, I agree completely. Into the, the street. The concrete curb, you're right. right. If, if you put but the I, I agree with the gentleman there that you know, we want to stop the, uh, the car at the edge of uh, the uh, uh, asphalt curbing. Yes. So the concrete curb will be two feet away, so the wheel will stop that. So, so if you're okay with the, with the wheel stop, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that the was our intent anyway, because we looked at it, we study it, we, we see it. And, uh, and you know the safety is very, very you know concerned to everybody. Right. The, the potted plant, while it may look better, will make your car stick farther out into the right. road. Right. Okay. Unless we get one of those uh, narrow ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. But <laughs> but we can put the curbs. You know. Yeah. Okay. We tried to put the. Uh, uh, we started last summer, uh, put a couple pots out there. You know, good size against the building in plastic, and uh, 
uh, with some flowers, uh, clean hands, uh, you know, you have to clean up the property, stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were started using it as a trash. And that's okay. That's all right. No problem. You know, they've got people, staff, they're cleaning up, and we put some tags on it. It helped out that it was not a trash can, and, and it helped out. But uh, the beauty is that, that the corner is, is being – I live I, – I moved in the South End when I was 16 years old. I remember when the drugstore was there, and that place was always going – you know what I mean? Now it's coming back alive a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak on this? Excellent. Um, if you folks would allow this individual sure. to uh, take the mic. Good evening. Hi, evening. Good evening. My name is Ed Sotoquist. I have the property adjacent to the store. And I do uh, give Sal a lot of um, encouragement as he's been doing a lot to clean up the property. Uh, like I said, one concern that I did hear is there's no waitress staff that's being provided. Um, I'm just concerned about customers going out there, having lunch, and leaving their papers on the table and going away, okay? I try very hard to keep the property that I own clean as possible, but I do get a lot of debris from the liquor store when people don't have the winning lottery ticket, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> again, what I did here, you did reference that you do have um, garbage bins along the property line in the back where they do park cars, okay? But, again, I'm not clear as far as trash cans that are gonna be um, installed there to accommodate and hopefully customers will be courteous enough to take the tra trash when they are done eating lunch, okay? And how is that gonna be addressed, all right? So that's, okay. that's one thing that having the property next door, I don't wanna see the wings picking up trash, okay? Thank you very much. Agreed. Thank you for participating. Is there anybody else? Want to come back up to the mic? And and so that gentleman expressed exactly what I was getting at. You know that a waste receptacle will at least help, right? Um, you know, some of your patrons will throw it away, and others are going to walk away. So it needs but to be kept up, right? I believe that the pick of uh, the uh, of uh, the uh, lunch hour is between uh, call it eleven to two o'clock. And uh, you know, at the time, uh, you know, in the store, you have three people, you know, pretty much working uh, in the daily. So what's going to happen is uh, they they uh, they serve the food in uh, in uh, in trays. Uh, they will go probably. Let's look at the scenario. They will go outside and uh, have lunch, and then what they do is they they either they pick up the tray, they bring it back inside, or they can do it, put the trash in the cans out there, and just leave the tray on the table, and the staff will pick it up. It's pretty much, uh, you know, it's been working like that inside. So in, it's, it's something automatically that you have your patrons right now doing exactly that. And that could be outside with, uh, you know, under the sun in the same way. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? I want to add just one more thing to it that uh, uh, and he, the gentleman can affirm that. He can rebuttal if he wants to. Uh, that uh, since Fitchell moved in there, Okay, and we've been looking at the property. Uh, I believe is, I will say, about seventy-five percent cleaner now than it was when a year and a half ago Spitzer moved in. That I can assure you. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Motion to close the hearing. George. No. Some. A second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, excellent. Thank you. Have a seat. We're going to talk about it a bit. Thank you. Anybody care to make a motion? Motion to make made to approve the application. I'll second it with the stipulations. One, that they uh, install curb stops in front of, in the parking spaces that are directly in front of where the tables are going to go. Uh, to keep the cars from going up onto the onto the sidewalk, and second that um, trash cans be provided outside, and that the area be policed at the end of every day. 
I'll second that. Uh, I already uh, did. I already did. That's <laughs> good. But I would, I would <laughs> I'd, I'd like that. to amend that uh, by being a little more specific relative to the curb stops. I'd like the, 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 the terms either concrete or granite uh, curb stops uh, uh, inserted into, into that motion. Or at least I'd like some discussion on that. Well, I think concrete makes sense. I don't, I don't know that. I think granite ones would probably be too heavy to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be too expensive to buy. I suspect so, but I thought I'd give that as an alternative. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that they would make them out of wood, right? But that's another alternative, I guess. Well, sometimes they have those kind of rubberized plastic. Well, yeah, right. So, so I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of thinking I, I wouldn't be specific. Curb stops, whatever is an approved curb stop to the town staff's we'll approval. Have, maybe they can um, okay. work with the town engineer on. That makes sense. Right. There are, uh, there are other options out there that, you know, may be more cost effective that still work. I mean, they do have to be pinned in place. That's really the more important thing. It is, yeah. Um, or screwed in or whatever if they can yeah, be removed seasonally. Remove them once in a while. No, I think they, they indicated they'll remove them in the winter time for right. snow plowing, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. We're not up in New Hampshire. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, is that parking lot part of the property, or is it part of the town? It's part of the property. The, okay. the property line is farther out in the parking spaces. Okay. So it's not like the B and B parking lot. No, it's not, not as, yeah. right. not as okay. screwed up as the B and B parking lot. Right. Okay. Right. No comment on that. Okay. So, the, so the motion is with the stops as approved by town staff, or working with town staff. Yep. All right. I, I do uh, just ask for a clarification on. When you mentioned uh, policing, do you mean um, having staff, meaning the, the restaurant staff, to just make sure at the end of the day that everything is clean and put away? Is that what you mean by policing? Yeah, like taking in the chairs and cleaning up trash that's mm -hmm. sitting in their area that's there. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Good luck. Thank you moved on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so shall we go back to uh, old business? Application or uh, item 2.1, application 2020-19-Z, Town of Weathersfield seeking a zoning regulation amendment for a temporary moratorium on storage facilities, section 5.2.8.3. You want to uh, sure bring us up to speed? Uh, uh, for the record, uh, Peter Gillespie, uh, town planner. Um, you have a memo dated February 10th, uh, 2020, regarding this this subject matter. Uh, time flies. It's nearly six months since the initial uh, the moratorium was put into effect. If you recall, uh, you put this in place for a six month period with an optional uh, additional six month um, proviso if uh, if need be. Um, we have had a couple of uh, meetings on the subject. Um, we, if you recall, we had a combination meeting of the uh, PNZ and the EDIC Redevelopment Agency to discuss um, the particular subject. Uh, this memo uh, includes most of what was provided to the um, EDIC, but also added some additional things in terms of where we are in the schedule and, uh, and such. Uh, several of you uh, did attend uh, the workshop. Um, we talked about a a variety of things related to the subject matter, but the the end all and the be all is that um, the group is not at a uh, point in time to um, make particular recommendations. So the uh, EDIC at their last meeting, which was last week, voted to recommend that an additional uh, period of time um, be um, put in place to continue the moratorium until such time as they can finish uh, the work of um, studying and making recommendations uh, on this particular moratorium. Um, there seems to be uh, a level of interest in crafting a regulation uh, that is, um, should I say, more restrictive than, in, than our present regulations are, but keeping the use permitted in uh, certain zones in town. I think that's just a quick summary. There seemed to be a general uh, idea that this is uh, a use that may be worthy of um, some additional spe specificity in our regulations. Right now, it's pretty wide open. 
Uh, it is permitted by special permit in two different zones, but I think the commission, the, uh, the, the group that had met feels that um, the regulation should be much more specific uh, and much more restrictive than they presently are. So I, s I, I got the sense that there was a willingness to make a recommendation like that. However, uh, they need more time to uh, craft and uh, make a more specific uh, recommendation. Do they need an additional six months? I don't know that they need the full six months, but they did recommend to the commission that you consider granting a six month additional time frame. Uh, they might come back within that six months and recommend changes so the moratorium could be shortened up if that's the scenario that unfolds. Um, so that in a nutshell uh, is um, kind of kind where we are today relating to this moratorium. I did provide you with a lot of information uh, in this um, memo about uh, some of the surrounding communities, what's going on in the marketplace, uh, what's going on in the regulatory environment for self-storage. Um, if you want to get into some of that detail, I, I'm certainly uh, willing to do that, but um, we, we place this on your agenda tonight because the moratorium is running out and uh, you might want to discuss taking some additional action. You do have one more meeting before the moratorium runs out, so if you didn't want to uh, vote on this tonight, you still have time. We could put it on the next agenda and still um, uh, the, the moratorium would not be, would not expire yet. So I want to talk about the, uh, the schedule. How long would it take to get new regs in place? If you were to hand us a draft set of regulations today, what would be the absolute fastest we'd have it on the The absolute list? fastest, if I handed it to you today, would, would be the first meeting in April, so six weeks. <coughs> yeah, we basically have a statutory requirement to send it out to the regional planning agency. I can't, I always, I, I can't remember if it's 35 or 30 days, but um, it's in that uh, realm. Um, and uh, so there is a, a waiting period by the time we would submit the application okay. uh, for that to happen and provide the notice that we have to provide. So, so let's then talk about how long is it reasonable to assume you'll have a set of Regs, I would <laughs> I would say um, you know April being the you know unrealistic short term uh, scenario uh, probably to be to be honest sometime in the summer yeah, yeah at this point in time um, we got a bunch of other things going on uh, we have been working on it we have some regulations from other communities uh, you know I could um, you know be drafting some language I would think within the next month or six weeks and then have the committee meet, see if they like it, and then submit an application uh, and get that process going. So six weeks plus another. So we're, we're talking- three, three months three is months. way too short. Yeah. yeah, I think three months is somewhere three months to six months. Why don't we make it six months? So that's so the only reason not to, right? Because I tend to agree. Let's six let's just do six months, right? We get bogged down somewhere. I don't want to, I don't want to just take the pressure off making it happen too, because that right. doesn't help you either. Right. right? But so, so three the, was is silly short. So I explained to the EDIC at their last meeting that, um, you know, they were debating, they had the same conversation. Should we recommend three months? Should we recommend, you know, uh, uh, if we do it faster, we can have the hearing, um, decide what you want to do, and it, the, the moratorium could be over because you would replace yeah, it with. We right. Yeah, so it's, it yeah, we can, like you know. Yeah, I can, I can move this along, uh, with, as I say, within that three-month time frame, and then you might have three more. Then it shorten it by three months, but s things could happen, you know. And uh, you know, you, I could always bring it back to you, and you could add another three months. So there's that those options. So, um, okay, for, well, you to, for you to discuss. Yeah, I guess I'm citing for the six months. Then just yeah, right? Jim, I, I read through this before when we were in the meeting, mm -hmm. and you know, I went through all the technical part of the rear, which is all the things that are needed. I listened to the people there and. I honestly, as two or three of the other commissioners did, I really feel we do need more detailed regulations, no question about it. These facilities aren't the worst from a financial point of view. They're high end and they're up in the $10 million range at times in many communities. They don't require parking. They do have some benefits. Now, whether we want to locate it in that location, the silent Dean, if it comes that way, if that's what they're pushing for, I don't know. 
but whatever it, it makes sense that we update the re regulations and there's a lot in here and I've written my comments down and I'm in favor of most of them the details because we have that and require that now and these old things don't seem to have any detail requirements at all to speak of so I think we're going definitely in the right direction and the sooner the better huh? do, do we have specific parking requirements that apply just to this use out of curiosity well, uh, we, I think we call it the it's one of the industrial you know generic use right because I, I think some towns have a much reduced parking requirement given the nature of this compared to other kinds yeah, of I don't, I don't think so. we have a specific um, and we've applied a different parking standard uh, for the various projects that we have approved let me take a quick Right. I'm just thinking, here. is that yep. one more thing that can be looked right. at as part of what you're doing? No parking for these things. Well, it's definitely a reduced um, right. parking standard than um, than we might otherwise apply. But let me look. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the one up on Arrow Road, we had like 23 parking spaces or something like that. You know, a couple for the employees and then you know some minimum number for customers we have a uh, as I said at the beginning it's uh, under the industrial standards we have a warehouse slash storage use category and that uh, is one space per 2,500 square feet that's pretty reduced it's I pretty think. reduced I, pr I would <laughs> but you make a good point we should definitely as part of this mm -hmm. research if there is uh, you know a more specific standard to self storage versus warehouse right. and self storage, so it's not like medical facilities, right? That's for sure. right. <laughs> but I, I I agree. If you don't do six months, we're already up against the wall before we start and handicap ourselves to get all the relevant information that we ought to look at. I think so. Right. Yeah. I mean, frankly, I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with six months because we actually are working on this. So. You know, it's not like we're going to hear about it again in five months. So I'd make a motion to extend the temporary moratorium for an additional 180 days. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? The one thing, I'd like to uh, see this study committee that's, that's looking into this uh, uh, perhaps widen its scope of, uh, of assessment uh, to include uh, an examination of the the need by you know Wethersfield residents for such facilities and w what any kind of strictures, any kind of particular requirements or features that would be uh, amenable to satisfy the actual need of, of Wethersfield residents, uh, s particularly since many of these facilities are used as storage space for folks that are you know. Uh, downsizing due to moving into uh, things like assisted living facilities and the, and the like, and uh, I, I, I tend to think that, that studies of these tend to look at it from the standpoint of sort of the, the industrial producer uh, and the town regulatory aspects and not look into the, the consumer aspects of, of these facilities, and so I'd like a more wider time, consideration. Right? And I think that that may require the additional time, and I'm all I I'm, agree with you. I'm all in support of the additional uh, the additional time that's recommended in the rev re in the rev resolution. Tom, could you maybe expand upon that a little further so I get a better handle on what kind of questions you might have as we come back? Are you just simply inquiring as to what the market is, or are you uh, digging deeper and wanting us to somehow research? what a prospective tenant is looking for that may not be in the marketplace? Well, more like what kind of prospective tenants? What, you know, what are the, the, the potential needs of people for such, you know, such space? And that would involve you know, the size of such storage areas and whether or not there are different sizes that, that would be fitted onto the same site or things of that sort, uh, as well as kind of identifying perhaps what, you know, what, uh, you know, what the overall need and more of a needs-based assessment as opposed to simply market-based assessment. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, our staff has the capability to do that level of 
Great. I can certainly talk to um, our existing um, facilities and see if they would be willing to share some insights in terms of what people are asking for versus what they have, but I don't know um, how much more in terms of capability staff, our staff has to do that level of, um, I can certainly find out you know, what the occupancy, I, I've heard that the one on the Silas Dean Highway on the north end is 100% occupied and you know, they've run out of um, space. I mean, I can certainly get you, you know, some of that level of information, but I'm not sure how I could get you the information on, you know, what the consumers are looking for that isn't necessarily being provided with our existing facilities or facilities uh, in, the, in the region. Yeah, or I mean, I'm not sure we could yeah. do that level of, of survey uh, work. I, I, would, I would certainly not want to put uh, you know, staff uh, at, at, you know, at risk for overextension here, but I'd just like, you know, the, in as, in, in as best as you can, mm -hmm. address, address the issue of, of, of consumer need. We do intend to reach out to the industry and get some or hopefully they will share some insights. You know, there's a certain level of uh, competitiveness and confidentiality that I'm sure they want to keep close to the vest so their competitors don't necessarily, you know, tap into some of that stuff. But we can certainly make the effort. Um, as I said, I did plan on reaching out to the industry if they're willing to talk to us or come to a hearing or a meeting and share with I'd us also their re insights. i reach out to uh, some, you know, for example, some uh, entities that are uh, are, are concerned or advocates for the particular kinds of people that I'm interested in having to make sure that their, their needs are served, such as uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, agencies regarding the aging um, and uh, also perhaps um, uh, you know, uh, organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations that, that serve uh, the needs of, of people of this ilk, people that are uh, aged, dis disabled, and the like. So are, are you uh, saying providing, excuse me for a minute, are you saying, Tom, providing storage for, for like nonprofit organizations? No, no, and no, for, for people elderly? that are served by nonprofit. Oh, people that are, okay. Um, I, so, I, yeah, I'm still struggling with yeah. it. Um, <coughs> so I'm, I'm trying to figure out if you're trying to limit the amount of square footage provided for this particular industry within Weathersfield so that, in other words, you're trying to say, what's the demand per household? And Weathersfield has X households, so Weathersfield shouldn't provide any more than Y square footage. Is that what you're looking for? Actually, or are you trying the reverse to of that. That's what I'm okay. sure that, that people that have needs get, get served and we don't just so cut you know, cut things down to a minimalist level to satisfy so, perhaps so other, cons other, other considerations such as aesthetics and the like. Right, so the way I described it would be difficult to get from a developer. What you're asking for should be the straightforward stuff that a developer provides, right? What do they think their market is, right? Because they're going to want to try and meet that need, yes? So the short answer is if you, the, the industry research, we did it, everybody uses these facilities. Businesses, residents, uh, residents in all age categories, there's certain higher percentages within that. Um, I don't know that I've seen information regarding income levels and race and some of, you know, those kinds of things. So I might not be able to get you that level uh, of detail, but we can give you kind of industry standards about at the national level, I don't know if they break it down to the regional level, but about who tends to use these, um, and maybe even what size units um, you know they do tend to use. But I don't know uh, how much more uh, I could get, you know, to answer specific questions about you know folks who are, you know, seventy and over, or you know certain income levels, or or, the, or that kind of thing. So um, without that stuff, as I said earlier, being Kind of held close to the vest with the uh, with the industry people, but we can certainly see if there's some things out there. Right. So it, yeah, at just least, do at least what, it's what you can. Yeah. Right. And That's it's it is stuff that the developers should be able to have available to them. 
whether they'll share it or not, it's a different story. That's and right. and so the way I was outlining it would be would have been more problematic to try and achieve. So it sounds like it's the easier one as long as they'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, and, and you know, I don't know that you need to have people share it with you. I mean, we can look at the applications yep. in other surrounding towns and you know assume there's some degree of similarity because it's you know as you said you know it's businesses it's you know younger people who have an apartment and don't have room for all their junk you know it's older people who have moved into a different situation and don't have room for all their stuff it's you know the kids who have inherited all of this stuff from their parents and their in-laws and you know haven't yet pulled the plug and gotten the dumpster for it um, you know, so it's kind of all of those things and, you know, the the mix of unit sizes and prices and so forth is probably stuff that they're not willing to share. But, um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's probably out there. And frankly, I don't know how, in what way that will inform our drafting of regulations. I mean, it's like, you know, you can kind of understand you know, is there a market for X, but you, you know what the market is today, but you don't know what the market's gonna be five years from now because it may be, you know, something completely different and completely unanticipated. And if, you know, if, if all we're really regulating is the use and the appearance and the infrastructure associated with it, you know, I guess I'd have to rely on people that are making the investment to put the thing up to have done their due diligence. Um, but I think by all accounts, there there is a demand and there is a growing demand. You know, whether this is the highest form of land use, you know, conceivable in the town, uh, I think is open for discussion. But, um, you know, there certainly is a, is a demand probably in all of the different demographics, including the ones that, that you were interested in. Well, what, one of the interesting points that I thought was made in the report that was prepared by, by both you and Denise, um, as, as I was reading through it, 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 it makes the point that, that the self-storage, I'm on page six, the self-storage industry recommended standard for demand is approximately like, you know, seven to eight square feet per person in a three mile radius and blah, blah, blah. And that this puts Weathersfield at like 216,000 square feet. And then the next point you make is that at the present time, we are roughly at 216,000 square feet of space. So we are meeting, based on industry standards right now, we are meeting demand, which I thought was an interesting point. I don't know how that seven to eight you know, square foot per person, it, you know, it, how you came up with that number. Or, with, you know, it probably is gonna go up, at least you know, there's probably a trend because <coughs> people tend to store their facilities. But I thought that was an interesting point that we were like still <coughs> around there. Yeah, it's funny how the math worked out that way and that's just the way the math worked out. Yeah. You might and I I didn't it's factor telling. in I didn't factor in the other towns. So as you get farther out, that number goes up. Ex right. kind of exponentially. I saw that too, yeah. It was it was really an excellent report. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. It looks like the other towns nearby are not really pushing it or aren't getting it exactly. If there is interest uh, Rocky Hill has uh, had a couple people, and then uh, Glastonbury has yeah, had people. Go There's no pending applications, right? Yeah. So people are looking around. It could be the same people that have approached, you know, property owners here in town still. It doesn't look like a high demand at, at that, with that information, but who the heck knows what it could be six months. Right, and things always change. Industries always change, so I think people are getting still getting more and more stuff. Baby boomers. And they think their kids want it. <laughs> I, have a gr I have a garage full of my kids' stuff, and they're, they don't live with me anymore, so. All right, we have a motion and a second, right? Yes. I'm remembering correctly? All right. All those in favor of 180 day, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Item 3.2, an 824 review involving a $500 compensation for utility easement at Spring and Maple. So the, uh, they're, they are um, redoing the signal uh, at that intersection and need uh, 
a uh, little bit of land area to place some of the uh, uh, ground-based uh, support structures for the uh, redone intersection. So you have um, some information specific to that. You have a um, letter from the town clerk initiating the uh, A24 uh, referral. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, request. I believe it's a 14 foot by 11 foot uh, easement um, at the northeast corner of the intersection. Um, and the state has offered a whopping $500 for the uh, easement. Um, and obviously uh, there's a bigger project there to, to redo the uh, in intersection. So, it, and it doesn't conflict with any of the sidewalks uh, or the parking lot that's, um, that's there now. Um, there are some, there's a map that goes with it showing the specific location and then there's a bigger uh, overview of the entire intersection and what the overall uh, plan uh, intends to do. Um, I know the town engineer is working uh, with the DOT uh, to make sure uh, the development uh, in proximity that was recently approved, some of those traffic movements are being factored into the uh, overall uh, intersection uh, improvements. Um, and those conversations are going on uh, right now. There was some talk about doing a queue, uh, a more of a queue analysis for some of the turning movements and that kind of thing to make sure the turning lanes and uh, those kinds of movements are factored into the uh, overall plan. But nevertheless, this is a separate matter and it's simply an 824 uh, referral for the uh, 14 by 11 uh, yeah, easement. It's never in minus 40 years I'm here ever received one. An 824 referral? Yeah, we've received those. Yeah. But not DOT sending something on a <coughs> corner. Uh, well, normally they keep it in the right of way. Yeah. Um, and they wouldn't have to come to us for th something like this. Taking land or a it's an easement. It's it's not a. It's <coughs> taking an easement over town land. Right. And don't they do that at other intersections? Uh, well, if you're buying, if if you're buying, don't? well, if they're buying private property you're doing it with a private property owner yeah. it's not like you guys have right. it's not like the town owns property at all the intersections right gotcha yeah. That's so why we've never gotten one of and a lot of them stay within the right of way yeah. you know they make it work without having to pursue that's why the town council is sending it to us and maybe we didn't in the past or something. no i no. i think um you don't get these are this is not something typically you would get and, and tom is correct i mean th we just happen to own land outside of the right of way that you know we and we don't at m most intersections okay. make a motion we do a positive report under Second. 824 so you don't want 600 <laughs> <laughs> there's no flexibility in the no, we'll, end no. Up pay, we'll end up paying the difference so. <laughs> it's not <coughs> like a store episode of storage wars That's where they can bid higher yeah. <laughs> they're gonna put in a pole gantry over there <laughs> ouch all right, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. All right, minutes. So uh, this minutes of the February 4th. Motion to approve. to approve. All right, I'll second. All right, thank you both. Any uh, edits or are they perfect? The fourth looks like uh, we had Everybody here. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. The February 3rd meeting you know, it's is kind of strange. Mr. Chairman, in the minutes, there is a comment toward the end there. I even noted it in the only comment I made in here, which kind of supports Tom's request, really, uh, on information. And as Dan requested more information on recent self-storage development projects in Connecticut and the type of development that is presently occurring. So he was kind of supportive back at that meeting on Larry saying some comments on that. Right. So the minutes of the special workshop. Motion to approve. Second. Were you guys there? Yes, sir. Okay. I called it to order. Uh -huh. ah. Without even knowing. Rich had a prominent role in that meeting. Did he? <laughs> all right. So you guys uh, can attest to uh, they're, they're terrific, huh? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Anything else? Let's staff reports. We got the economic development. So we provided reports. you with a planning department uh, report for last year, and also um, the zoning officer provided you with uh, property maintenance and zoning enforcement summary for 2019. I'd like to thank both people for their reports. They're well done and uh, particularly well treated. And uh, um, what's the difference between pending and non-compliant on the? Zoning enforcement one. Good question. I'm probably not the person to answer that one. I can certainly uh, follow up with him and get an understanding of how he defines that. But yeah, because I mean, it's not cumulative. Is there one for? Is an ex is there an example maybe specifically that I could? Well, no. I mean, it, it's the the breakdown. Okay, it's you the know, overall say breakdown. There are Fourteen pending and ten non-compliant, but. I don't yeah, know whether about a definition for both of them, sorry. Well, no, no, it's more like, what does it mean? Like, does pending mean they're working on cleaning it up, or he's working on mm -hmm. enforcing, and what if anything's being done on the non-compliant ones? Maybe he hasn't gotten to those yet, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the... Well, some of them are a year old. Okay. Maybe it should say very non-compliant? Really, 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 non really non-compliant. Yeah. Insanitary. You know, you're interested whether somebody's giving them a real hard time on all the long periods. Well, I, I don't even know what it means. I don't know what pending means. I don't know what non-compliant means, and and you can't really tell what the nature of these things are if they're you know significant or not. Yeah. For example, a lucky loser is not. Or is it pending? I guess the good part is the non-compliant is the smallest number. Yeah. But right, right. still. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, if it's non-compliant and it's, you know, somebody has their trash can out by the edge of the road, I'd be a lot less concerned right. if it was non-compliant and it was an unlicensed kennel or something. Yep, yep. So I guess not surprisingly, the... Uh, Storage of boats, campers, trailers, and the unregistered vehicles are the lion's share of these. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's probably all April because we heard most of them in June and July. <laughs> yeah. So there were no grass ones in there, but I could tell you some. All right. Um, public comments. Oh, you're the only one left. All right. Anything else? Just a couple of things. Um, uh, March 26th is the CFPZA um, annual conference. We um, have submitted Joe Hammer for a Lifetime Achievement Award, and we've submitted Tom Dean for the 12 year length of service award. Uh, we're waiting, Denise, we're waiting to hear back. Okay, so it's official. Um, but there's we have some award winners among us. So that is the 26th of March. I'm not sure what day of the week that is, but Thursday. 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 So um, please uh, let us know. Um, I think we take care of that for you out of our budget. So let us know. I assume Joe and Tom yes. were both. So uh, in terms of the rest, uh, of the members, please let us know and we'll keep a list. Um, and then usually they'll uh, save us a table. Uh, I can't remember what the sub, who's the speaker that time. Um, let's see, affordable housing maybe? 830G, the Affordable Housing Appeals uh, Act. Hiram. Hiram Peck and then town planner Mark Devo from, Mark DeVoe from Farmington is gonna moderate the question and answer. Um, so. Um, let me know if you, um, uh, any others want to join um, Tom and Joe at that. Uh, so that's one thing. Second thing is if anyone is interested on Friday, February 28th, um, the uh, Borden, uh, they're they they they're opening um, the doors for the uh, Borden project. If you would like to get a tour 
of the construction progress on the new building. I don't know exactly what, what Friday the 28th of February. Yeah. February. If you would like, the elevators are not um, functioning yet, so they are willing to take you up to the roof as long as you're willing to hike five flights of stairs. Uh, we do need a head count because uh, you would probably have to wear hard hats and they'd have to plan accordingly. So Denise is going to send out an email with more details. So when you see that, if you could respond, it would be during the day on a Friday. Uh, if you want to join us, we're going to invite um, town council and EDIC members, so anyone who might want to get a tour. Uh, but they do promise they'll let you get up on the roof and see the uh, go swimming, see the view, see the deck or whatever progress they've made uh, on that. So, um, what else do we have for? Sure, there's no pool. It's just no a, pool. It's just, just a roof a deck a to a hang out. To hang out. Let's not be spreading some there. rumors about pools and stuff on their roof. <laughs> right. So. Um, so those are the two. Um, we do have one application for the next meeting. Um, we may have some other things come in. Um, so the me next meeting should be pretty quiet. But nevertheless, we do have an application pending. So we, we do need our town planner here for that, though. I will be back for that meeting. Has anyone been arrested? Maybe I'll wear a Hawaiian shirt to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That'll look real good on the on the TV. I think it's broadcasting black and white. Ah, there you go. All right. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's fast enough while you're out there. <coughs> given the given the honorees, I would be <laughs> remiss if I threw out that. That'd be worth right. coming, huh? That's right. If we, if we hang out long enough, like that one time when they open up the bar. <laughs>